Yes. He's a good dude. Uh, my takeaway at the top was, you know, four years ago I was told in college basketball, experience doesn't matter. It matters, and it mattered for Carolina, and it matters for Villanova, and the last six finalists haven't had world-class NBA guys. They've had a bunch of 23-year-old, 22-year-old dudes that are coachable and that work hard and that love college basketball. And that, that It feels like experience matters again. I think culture matters as well. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of things that had to come together in order for this team to, to be as good. My, you asked my takeaway. The first thing is, it's a tournament to which it gives us a lot of random results. You it know? does. M Michigan won the Big Ten tournament, and I know they were on fire, but they probably should have lost to Houston um, in, in the second round. Right? They were dead to rights beat. You, Loyola was beaten several times. Okay, so, so we, have, we have random results. All that said, this was the best team in the sport when healthy. The best team won a tournament that usually gives us random results and sometimes a random champion. Yeah. It, that was not the case. The best team from the start, the best team at the finish, and I think it's about culture. It's about age. You know, uh, there's, there's coaches in college basketball that say, get old, stay old, right? You want to have older teams, 21, and, uh, 21 and up, which is what they have. Uh, but that's more difficult than you think. But I think they won because of their culture. I think they won because of their defense. Changing with the defensive rules, if you watch them play, they don't get called for fouls very often, but they are very physical from the waist and below. Same thing in Michigan is. Uh, you have to have hybrid players. This is something that the Boston Celtics made an adjustment with, and we've talked about in the offseason. Getting big guys that can play on the outside, but guard and rebound on the inside yeah. as well. They have that. Um, and, and then... You know, evolving and embracing the three-point shot, yeah. I think, is a big part of it. Yeah. But, look, a lot of luck had to come together. They got Jalen Brunson. There was some luck to that because he might have been – he was probably going to Temple with his dad as assistant coach. Right. Dante DiMincenzo has 30 off the bench. He breaks his foot his freshman year. Otherwise, he probably plays, might be unhappy, might have left and transferred, right? E Eric Pascal transfers in because there's a coaching change at Fordham. Um, you have Amari Spellman doesn't play last year, changes his body because he's academically ineligible. So a lot of things had to come together, but the, the big part was this was the best team. They played like the best team, and like you said, they were punched in the mouth. They were a little bit tight. Michigan was ready to play. They took that punch, and they counterpunched, and Michigan had no answers. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I'm just very, very happy for them. Philadelphia, this is the championship. I'm very, very happy for uh, Okay, so the Jim Mora thing, in, in fact, um, We've already played your bite. You're unhappy yes. with it. But what about my argument that maybe Jim Mora is saying he goes to Denver, he goes to Buffalo, he goes to these 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You make your money in this league in your second and third contract. Telling Cleveland not to draft him is the greatest favor anybody's ever done to Josh Rosen. I, I, don't, I don't read it that way. I read it as Jim Mora trying to get and stay in the media. You okay? think so? I mean, look, he coached in Atlanta. That didn't work. He got another head coaching job with the Seahawks. That didn't work. He got a job at UCLA, and that didn't work. I think he's a good coach, and I think he's also good on TV. He has a very he's, look, comes from a football family, but I think you, uh, you ask why he's being honest because it, that's the difference between a guy that wants to be in the media or a guy who wants to get back into coaching. Right? If you want to get back into coaching, and somebody says, "What do you What do you think about Josh Rosen?" He's great. He is Jesus reincarnate as a as as a player. Okay. But instead, you ask somebody who's honest and analytical, and they use words like millennial. A millennial is a lot like the word mediocre, right? If I, if, I say, if I say mediocre, Christine, if I say the word mediocre, ah, you know what? Honey, your d dinner was mediocre tonight. Uh, what would your reaction be? Is that a, is that, is that a positive a nice, term or a oh, negative term? I see what you're saying. Negative. It's, it's a negative thing. Right. What does mediocre mean? Negative. Ne average. Average. Okay? It means right there in the middle. But we take it as a negative term. And older people, decision makers... Uh, you hear the word millennial, and they think, uh, guy taking selfies, yeah. guy that knows everything. Millennials know everything. Yeah, they, yeah. Might ask, they might ask a question, but they think they no, already know the answer. Really good point, wait, wait, what right? side are you on this, Doug? Do you what? agree with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, no, look, when I was 26, whatever I was, Gen X, Y, whatever I was, I thought I knew everything. <laughs> yeah. And then I, so then I what, figured I didn't know anything. So then it has right? And I still am but I'm still learning things. But millennial, remember, you have to be honest about it. Okay. Fifty-two-year-old men are are doing all the decision making in the NFL. Millennial's a bad word. It is. It's it a, is it's a, a I'm, negative. I'm just telling you, it it's, shouldn't be. But it, it is. I didn't say it's supposed to be. It is. Mediocre is not a bad word by definition. But and when I say, "Hey, man, Gottlieb, your segment was mediocre," like, "Damn, why? What did I do wrong? There's nothing. It was average. You're always really good. That was right along par. That was average." But anyone takes mediocre as average. You tell a fifty-year-old, fifty-five-year-old scout or front office or an owner of a team, "Hey, that kid." 
It's kind of a millennial. You it know? is a negative. He always wants to know why. Oh, you have no he's, question. But here's another one. I know. I he's agree got with you. It's a, a negative, yeah. and I don't think He's got a lot be. of other interests. Whoa. Now, that Whoa. one. Now you that know what one. it is? It's because non-millennials look at millennials, and I honestly think that they are jealous of the lives that we that we live or the way that we think. It's like we're not going to no, no, go climb we, a corporate we've had, ladder we've, or we've do the same thing every day. No, you guys live in youth hostels. We live in mansions. We're not jealous at all. Think a little more open-mindedly. Well, listen. It's true. We, I, I'm an, a very open-minded 42-year-old. Who okay? doesn't like millennials? And no, I understand because I was once 26 years old when, 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 when I got into business is. and thought I knew everything about anything. And then I was like, damn, I don't know anything. Right? I just didn't. I, I didn't understand. We all think the same way at a younger age, and okay. we, kind of, we kind of evolved. Okay, stay there. Coming back, more Doug Gottlieb.